Thank you very much for that kind introduction. Um, it was definitely uh, not deserved, but um, I definitely need to give my PR people the 20 bucks they deserve. <laughs> so, um, so we're going to talk about the the state of concussion in Arizona. So when we're when we're this is kind of an odd thing, right? Um, in terms of uh, whether or not it's a state of the state address, uh, a state of the nation, uh, and what happens in these uh, state addresses is that the executive branch will talk to the legislative branch and really update them on what's going on in their particular state. Um, and so not unlike that, what I'm here to tell you today is that the state of concussion in Arizona specifically uh, is healthy. Um, and this may sound like a weird comment, but if there's any place in the country you're gonna have concussion, Arizona is the place to have it. <laughs> Sounds weird, right? Okay, so when we were looking at uh, concussion, especially as it, uh, let's go back one if you don't mind, sorry. Um, when we're looking at concussion specifically, there are three elements that we wanna make sure that we address as it pertains to uh, population. So we wanna look at what educational resources do people have. We wanna know um, the, the policies that are available to reduce injuries, as well as um, what is available to them uh, for uh, concussion. So looking a little bit about history, if we wanna look at um, the, the public pervasiveness of this particular issue, and we look uh, in the mid 2000s when our veterans were coming over from Iraq and Afghanistan and suffering brain injuries in part because the, um, the equipment uh, and the safety gear was far better than it had been in the past. These individuals were now surviving their injuries, but suffering from the consequences of mild, uh, moderate, and severe traumatic brain injuries. Uh, and then, of course, uh, into our, our public consciousness, so, you know, we didn't have uh, that much of a relationship uh, with those individuals coming up from the military, but we have a strong relationship when it comes to um, sports. So seeing this happen uh, week after week, sometimes day after day, uh, is really uh, what we were experiencing. So at that time, around that time, we decided there was a way to address it. So you heard from Dr. Lifshitz in terms of um, the, the issues associated with traumatic brain injury, uh, whether they are physical, in other words, were somatic, behavioral or emotional, or cognitive thinking. These are the consequences that uh, happen with any traumatic brain injury, whether it's in its mildest form as a concussion or a severe form. And the issue is, of course, that they are overlapping, and they are combined, and for you math fanatics, uh, it's a, it is a Venn diagram. And so what we decided to do a long time ago, many years ago now, uh, is to create the Barrow Concussion and Brain Injury Center to address the physical, behavioral, and cognitive deficits associated with this particular injury. And the way that we wanted to do it was to put the patient in the center. So this is one of our first uh, patients. This young lady suffered a, a brain injury after falling uh, off the back of a moving car. Um, and what we needed to do was to make sure that we would have um, all of the uh, siloed interests around traumatic brain injury to address, once again, those physical, behavioral, and cognitive deficits, but as well as um, uh, the resources needed. So the way it currently works is that myself or my colleague, uh, Dr. Zeman, who is a neurologist, um, uh, start by evaluating the pa uh, patient, establish what their needs are in those three domains, physical, behavioral, and cognitive. Neuropsychological testing and cognitive testing is performed. And we have a wonderful uh, psychiatrist to address those emotional issues, as well as uh, a great social worker to help to navigate these problems. And yes, from day one of our program, the Brain Injury Alliance of Arizona was there um, to uh, help our patients. And to this day, um, they have a spot in our clinic. They use uh, my office and they help to navigate many of the non-medical issues related to traumatic brain injury. Now, looking more uh, at policy, looking more at the broader sense, uh, and not just really at the brick and mortar pieces of uh, dealing with an individual traumatic brain injury, which of course is impactful, how do we do this for the rest of our Arizona population? Well, one of the ways, 
Uh, one of the ways is something called uh, the Sport Medical Advisory Committee, of which we have several members uh, in the room, including uh, Dr. McLeod. And I want you to look at that list, and the reason I want you to look at that list is you will see multiple healthcare institutions, you will see multiple uh, disciplines within healthcare, including uh, neurology, neuropsychology, sports medicine, athletic training, chiropractic medicine, naturopathic medicine, uh, as well as uh, therapists, etc. And all of these institutions um, are involved in setting the policy for our most vulnerable population, our youth, when it comes to sports. And this is truly an altruistic place when these individuals come together and do not have an agenda, but only are there to improve the health of our youth in Arizona when it comes to athletics. So here's a few examples. Who can tell me what is wrong with this particular picture? Gym straps, right. Why is that a problem? <laughs> this is why that's a problem. Okay, so if you are a, a high school football player, this is the coolest picture, and we used to say this is the coolest picture to, to post on your locker, right? No, I don't want to do that. To, to post on Instagram, okay? <laughs> so that is the issue. If you are not wearing a helmet, it cannot protect your head. The question was, is this a failure of the equipment or is this a behavioral issue? So we created a rule and the rule said that if, in the uh, event that a helmet comes off, go back one please, um, uh, in the event that the, the helmet comes off, uh, one more, uh, is it not coming up? No. Okay, in the event that a helmet comes off, the athlete has to go to the sidelines to have their helmet evaluated um, for fit and uh, they have to miss a play. Well, if you're a quarterback or a key player, that's a big problem, right? So in doing so, the Arizona Interscholastic Association, which is a governing body for high school sports in the state of Arizona, risked it losing its membership to the National Federation of High Schools by implementing this rule because it affects the game. So what we had to do, we had to present with them, uh, present to them this uh, research. And what we found is over the course of that season, uh, there was a significant decrease in the amount of helmets that were popping up, okay? Which means it wasn't a, uh, a factor of the equipment, it was the behavior uh, of the athletes. Now, we presented this information to the National Federation of High Schools, and they adopted Arizona's rule nationally. That same year, the NCAA adopted this uh, rule nationally. As you can see, when the, when the player's helmet comes off, they have to go and they uh, miss the next play. Now we also saw many other issues, and this represents actually injury rates in various sports. Um, at the top you see uh, football. Be careful not to use my hands because I'm not gonna point at you and then go through the slide. Um, uh, at the top you see uh, football, and the issue of course is uh, concussion uh, as well as other injuries. People always talk about soccer. Soccer is indeed number two, but you'll see it's a distant number two, which is the red line, okay? So what we did is we needed to change the um, issues with respect to practice. And what we did is we wanted to um, uh, address concussion in football practices. So while the rates of concussion are greatest in a game, the number of concussion in practice is really uh, a high, is greater than in games. So we decided that during the preseason, no more than half of the practices could be uh, contact, and during the regular season, no more than a third. And of course, for our coaches, we define contact as uh, being in pads and touching each other. Now, once again, we presented this information to the National Federation of High Schools, and they adopted it. We're also currently the only state that limits the amount of heading practice uh, in our athletes. Uh, as you can see, this is a legislation that we started in 2014, limiting to more, no more than 15 minutes and no, you cannot have consecutive days for that. Um, when it comes to education, we have the first concussion educational tool for whom this matters most, and that is a high school athlete. In the state of Arizona, over 400,000 high school athletes have completed Barrow Brain Bank. Over 400,000. Um, since then, there are two other states that require concussion education. We also offer uh, baseline concussion testing through a company called uh, Impact, and this is available for every single Arizona high school athlete, um, uh, providing some cognitive testing. 
In addition, one of the things that we do is we provide sideline coverage for Arizona State's uh, soccer team, the men's hockey team, uh, as well as uh, the football team, and for some uh, national games, uh, and even some uh, bigger games, uh, such as uh, this particular game that was here in 2015, which we were moving athletes uh, because of congestion. So the lesson here, of course, it doesn't matter if it's a, a rivalry game, a state championship, even in the biggest game in the world, um, we're taking athletes off the field. Now, how do we provide this care for our high school athletes? There are not enough neurologists or specialists in concussion in order to address um, this particular issue, but we do this using technology. Um, and the technology that we use allows us to do a sideline evaluation um, and allows us to provide that consultation. So this is actually the network that you've been hearing about. The, the, um, the emphasis, of course, is on education. Uh, then there's a baseline testing. A percentage will suffer uh, a concussion. We post, do post-injury testing, and at any point along the way, uh, we can um, provide that consultation. Now, we've done some research on this, uh, and on, uh, during a period of time in which we uh, looked at um, uh, about, uh, about 350 concussions uh, to our program. Uh, these were the recommendations. Returning uh, athletes to play and of course in a safe uh, manner, referring to clinic actually ended up being about 7%, which uh, our, our, our clinic managers weren't uh, all that um, thrilled about. But in either case, it clearly benefited the community. In fact, if you look at just uh, cost alone, over $2 million in costs. Um, uh, healthcare costs uh, as well as uh, baseline and post injury testing costs. But that is not um, the only story when it comes to concussion. What you see here is a video that uh, unfortunately will not play. <laughs> but this is where worlds collide. This is where the sports world collides with the domestic <clears throat> violence world. Um, this is uh, a, a video in which Janae Rice was uh, struck by her then husband or, or then boyfriend. Um, Ray Rice, uh, and she's knocked out cold. She suffers a brain injury in, in front of everybody's eyes, and not a single press release was about um, uh, her, Janae Rice's concussion. <clears throat> it was about Ray Rice's multiple concussions and why would he have this behavior and inflict this harm. So, for the past several years, since 2012, we've actually uh, had a program specifically for our domestic violence patients. And you'll see from the beginning, in cooperation with a number of shelters, the Brain Injury Alliance was there. So, indeed, when we've looked at policy, education, and resources, uh, we have uh, a number of, uh, of assets, a number of things that we're doing for our community. And if you look at the individuals here on your screen, all of whom you'll hear today, indeed, the health of, uh, of the state as, as well as, as it pertains to concussion. We have national and international uh, speakers, uh, Johnny and Tamara, just to name a few. Um, and so our, our state is rich with talent. It is rich with caring people. And at the middle of it all, of course, is the Brain Injury Alliance of Arizona, um, who is constantly providing that care. Thank you very much.